Time for the Talking Habs Montreal Canadiens Season Preview. Hey everybody, I'm Rick. Welcome to Talking Habs, where you get your daily fix of Blue Blanc Rouge. A new season is upon us, and with that comes the hope of progress in the rebuild, the hope of young prospects to make the show, the hope of the fans. Will my team make the playoffs? The hopes of the individual players to perform well, to improve on last season, and to be productive and help the team win. For the Montreal Canadiens, these hopes and dreams bring a a positive attitude toward development and progress in achieving their goals individually and as a team. For the fans, the hopes and dreams for the Habs 25th Stanley Cup comes into focus A little clearer as we see the progress in building a ho-hum prospect pool into one of the best in the league. Full of potential and excitement, something you can get behind and cheer for. Will Montreal win the Stanley Cup in 23-24? I wouldn't bet on it. But what I am looking for this season from the team whose logo is tattooed on my heart is progress. That's it, really. Progress. Progress in the rebuild? and progress in player development. I hear many voices saying that the Habs are missing elite players. And that may be, like at the moment, but I say we do have elite players developing, players who are young and haven't reached their ceilings yet. But once they do, they will be elite. And we have four of those, in my opinion, on the team or in the system right now. And they are Cole Caulfield, If Cole Caulfield starts scoring 40 to 50 goals a year starting this year, which I expect he will get 40-plus goals, that's elite. Kirby Doc. Kirby Doc has the potential to be an elite number one center, physical, dominant, and has plenty of offense in him. That's elite. Lane Hudson in the system, probably joining the team at the end of uh, near the end of this season. If Lane Hudson hits his ceiling or anywhere near it, he will be an elite defenseman. David Reinbacher, we got a glimpse of him in camp today. He wasn't overwhelming, but you can see the potential there. And if David Reinbacher hits his ceiling or anywhere close to it, he will be elite as well. I think we have a few guys here that may be elite. Maybe not, but maybe. Nick Suzuki. Nick Suzuki, if he starts hitting a point a game and he does this over his career... That's elite. Logan Mayu has the potential to be an elite defenseman. Alex Newhook has the potential to reach elite stats um, here, I think, with the lineup that we have and the the line mates he's going to have. Caden Gooley already showing that he's still, he, he's not going to be affected by the sophomore jinx uh, in camp. Caden Gooley has the potential to be elite. And I'm taking a guess on here because he really looked good in camp, but they sent him down, and that's Joshua Roy. If he hits his ceiling, also a potential elite player here. So we do have some guys, they're just not fully developed yet. And that's what happens on a young team. So this is my Montreal Canadiens 2023-24 Uh, season preview. And for the first time in a long time, there is real hope and real excitement, not just for a good season, but for the future as well. I'm not going to cover every little aspect of the upcoming season, but I'll go over what I feel is important and come to a prediction for how the season will shake out uh, with the Habs record and with where they finish in the league. If you like this video, give a thumbs up and leave a comment with your thoughts on what I'm saying here or how you feel the season will turn out. The Vice President of Hockey Operations is Jeff Gordon, the GM is Kent Hughes, and the head coach is Marty St. Louis. In this season, and for both the in and the outs, that's at the time that I'm recording because uh, things could happen, there's still time. Alex Newhook, coming in from Colorado, Gustav Lindstrom, defenseman coming in from Detroit. And Tanner Pearson, he's a forward, and he is coming in from in the trade for uh, Casey DeSmith to Vancouver. Out from last season, Mike Hoffman and Rem Pitlick, both sent to uh, Pittsburgh, and then Hoffman was sent to San Jose. Denis Gurianov, Jonathan Drouin. Isn't it nice to hear that? Uh, Joel Edmondson, 
Alex Belzeal and Paul Byron, who didn't play last season, but he was on, uh, you know, the main, the, uh, at some part of the roster, <laughs> and he retired. Prospects that could make the jump. Now, at the time that I'm recording, this first guy has already been sent down to Laval, but I think he could get a call up and actually could make the team and stay here once he gets called up. And that is Joshua Roy showed, I think he had a really good camp, and I think he's really close to being ready, and, you know, some point in the season, if there's a need for a forward call-up, I think he could get that call and then stick. Emil Heinemann, still in camp, and I think Emil Heinemann might just make the cut and break camp with Montreal. And then there's Lane Hudson, who, no, he's not in camp, but I think at the end of his college season, he's going to sign with Montreal, and he will be in, with the team and play a few games um, I don't know how many will be left exactly. Uh, so Lane Hudson, I think, will make the jump and not see AHL time. So let's look at the record from last season, how they finished, and some team stats as well. So they were 31, 45, and 6, with 68 points for that. 8th in the Atlantic and 28th overall in the league. Their special teams, power play, an abysmal 16.1%. Twenty-ninth in the league, the penalty kill also abysmal, seventy-two point seven percent. Twenty-ninth in the league, goals for two hundred and twenty-seven goals, twenty-sixth in the league. Goals against three hundred and five goals, fourth worst in the league. Overtime or shootout record was ten and six, which is really encouraging because this team's going to be good in the overtime going forward, I believe, and they've already got a good record in the overtime. So there you go. Um, there you go. Ten players to watch for the Habs this season. First one, Nick Suzuki, aiming for point of game status. I think he reaches it. He's going to be a great player. He already is. Cole Caulfield. I think Cole Caulfield gets at least 40 goals, but I think he's going to challenge for 50 goals. So that's something really that's going to be fun to watch. Kirby Doc emerging as a dominant, right now number two center, very physical, and um, he's got some games where you just want to see that all the time, and that is going to come like it's, it's going to be like that, and uh, it's going to start this season. Alex Newhook, new to the Habs so far in, in camp, showing his speed, his hands, his skills, his moves. Can't wait to see more. Yuri Slavkovsky. 19 years old, and he's looking a little bit better this year. He's still got a ways to go, but I think he's going to stick with the team, and I think we're going to enjoy watching him um, develop as the season goes along. Arbor Jackeye. Who doesn't want to see Arbor Jackeye lay the big hits and, if needed, take on whoever he has to uh, fight uh, if necessary? Mike Matheson. A sublime skater. You just love to watch this guy skate. Um, great offensive defenseman, um, leader out there, and you just enjoy seeing this Montreal-born uh, defenseman. Sam Montembeau, trying to prove that he's a number one goalie and a starter. Monty, who I really like, um, took a big step last season, and I expect him to take another big step this season. Go, Monty, go. Sean Monahan. Monaghan, I, I, I think he's going to play on the first line, and I think he's going to have a good season, and that's going to bring us a really good return at the trade deadline if the Habs do move him then, and I believe they, that he will, so I'm excited for that. Caden Gooley already showing in camp that he's lost nothing from last year as far as a sophomore jinx. You know, uh, he's, he's not going to be affected by that. Already looking good defensively and offensively. Can't wait to see what he delivers this season. Caden Gooley. You know, there were 45 players in Montreal practicing together in Brossard more than two weeks, anything closer to three, before training camp officially opened. And I think that's amazing. This speaks to an incredible team bonding, a commitment to the organization, and a care of each other that will be a big factor in an improvement in team play when they get into difficult games where that extra effort is needed. And down the road, when they begin to make the playoffs and eventually become contenders. When players care for each other, they give that extra effort and magic can happen. I think it will be because of this team bonding that we'll see a team that works harder 
and gives more, a team that will compete every game and maybe make a run for a wild card spot for like a good part of the season, a team that will surprise a lot of opponents and a team with the talent and desire to start learning how to be winners. So how do I think the season will go? And I'll give you my season prediction uh, as well. The Atlantic division is pretty stacked and it's going to be incredibly hard for Montreal to leapfrog over any of the other seven teams in the division. They may make a run for a wild card, but you know, once March comes around, they'll more than likely fall, fall out of the race. It's going to take a couple more seasons for, uh, for them to climb up the ladder to get near the top. This very strong Atlantic division will make a playoff spot very unrealistic um, going into the season. That being said, as fans, we will be treated to some very exciting hockey and get to see some meaningful games in what I think will be a fun season to watch and enjoy. So my season prediction for the record points and all that stuff is uh, the record 39, 36, and 7. I think they improve on last year. Not by leaps and bounds, but, you know, that's a nice improvement. 85 points. This is a good competitive division, and I think they're going to be up to competing. 21st overall. Uh, which means I think they'll be 12th from the bottom when it comes to draft time, and 7th or 8th, and more than likely 8th, in the Atlantic Division. It's going to be tough for them to leapfrog over anybody in this division. It's not saying that they can't do it, but I think it's unlikely that they can leapfrog over more than one team. But I still think they're going to finish in 8th in the Atlantic. And there you go. That's it. Thanks for watching. If you like this, give a thumbs up, leave a comment, and please share this video.